Hi, I'm Damon Edwards. So between my work with DTO Solutions or writing with the IT Revolution Press, I get to talk to a lot of folks who are interested in DevOps. These conversations have reminded me that while there is a lot already out there about what DevOps is or what DevOps isn't, there really isn't much about where DevOps came from or how the DevOps movement actually got started. So I've told these stories enough times that I decided to go ahead and record it. So without further ado, here it is. The short history of DevOps, or well, at least how I think I saw it happening. Our story begins in Belgium back in 2007. There we find a guy named Patrick Dubois. Now, Patrick had an interesting personal goal. Patrick wanted to learn IT from every possible angle. So as a consultant, Patrick had been picking his jobs based on the opportunity to work in every part of an IT organization. Now, Patrick had taken a project with the government ministry doing a large data center migration. So uh, specifically for this project, he was in charge of the testing. So that meant he had to spend a lot of time straddling uh, the various dev groups and the various ops groups. And this contrast uh, between how dev works and how ops works had always been something that was very unsettling to Patrick, but it was really the constant switching and back and forth on this specific project that was particularly frustrating to him. On one day, he'd find himself deep in the rhythm of agile development, and the next day he was firefighting and living the unpredictability of traditional operations. So, you know, while Patrick knew there had to be a better way, these two worlds of dev and ops just seemed miles apart and there were conflicts everywhere. Okay, so now let's jump forward to the Agile 2008 conference in Toronto, Canada. Uh, this guy here, Andrew Schaefer, he posts on the wall an idea for a birds of a feather or ad hoc session that he calls Agile Infrastructure. And when the time for this session rolls around, only one person showed up. And yep, you guessed it, it was Patrick Dubois. And when I say only one person showed up, I literally mean only one person showed up. Even Andrew skipped his own session. You see, Andrew had gotten such poor feedback on his proposed topic that he just figured nobody would want to talk about how to bridge the gap between development and operations. But it was Patrick who actually was at the conference to give a presentation on using Scrum and other agile practices within an operational context was so energized that someone else out there shared his frustration. He went and tracked down Andrew in the conference uh, hallway. There, they had a long discussion and realized that there had to be other people out there um, who wanted to talk about what seemed like such a widespread and systemic issue. Now, a bit of context, within the broader Agile community, continuous integration had been gaining in popularity and was moving Agile more towards deployment, but there still wasn't much out there that fully crossed the divide into operations. So Andrew and Patrick decided to get together and form the Agile Systems Administration Group on Google. And, you know, it got some interesting conversations, but by any measure, the traffic remained pretty small. So now let's jump forward to 2009, uh, specifically June 23rd, 2009, uh, where John Allspaugh and Paul Hammond, uh, who were both at Flickr at the time, were giving their now famous talk at O'Reilly's Velocity Conference in San Jose. Uh, the talk was called 10 plus deploys per day, Dev and Ops cooperation at Flickr. So Patrick was back home in Belgium watching this via streaming video, and he recognized that that's it. That's exactly the goal and topics that he was so passionate about. So on Twitter, Patrick was lamenting how he wished he could have attended Velocity. Um, but it was P Paul Nasrat who uh, tweeted back, hey, Patrick, why don't you start your own Velocity in Belgium? That way we can all attend. Wouldn't that be great? Ha ha ha. Well, you know, far from being a joke, the idea actually stuck in Patrick's head. So he soon put out a call on Twitter for a gathering to bring developers and systems administrators together in Ghent, Belgium on October 30th and 31st, 2009. So Patrick knew he needed a name for the event. It was obvious to him that he had to include dev, he had to include ops, and well, it was two days, so let's stick a, a days on, on there. And for some strange reason, um, even today when I asked him, he said he's not sure why, but he really liked the DOD acronym. It reminded him of dead on delivery, which I know, strange, go figure. but. That was it. DevOps Days uh, was the name, and DevOps Days um, it was. So now we'll never know if it was the right moment in time, fortuitous travel schedules, or something else altogether. But this really impressive crowd of forward thinking systems administrators, developers, managers, and toolsmiths, they came from all over the world to participate in DevOps Days. Now, you know, of course, soon after the, uh, the event was over, everybody uh, scattered and went back to their corners of the globe, but the conversation continued onward on, on Twitter. Now, it quickly became you know, too cumbersome to use the full DevOps Days name as the hashtag for the conversation, as you know, smaller hashtags would take up less of that you know, valuable 140 character real estate on Twitter. So the Days was dropped and the uh, DevOps hashtag really stuck. 
Now, speaking of the scattering, uh, Lindsay Homewood uh, liked the idea of DevOps Days so much that he took it back to Sydney, Australia with him and held the first DevOps Days down under. Myself, Andrew Schaefer, John Willis, we got together and with the help of Stefan Appitz and Daniel Francisco at LinkedIn, we held the first DevOps Days in the U.S. immediately following the 2010 edition of Velocity. But in the meantime, something far more interesting was starting to happen. Uh, sparked by the momentum of these early face-to-face -face meetings, this community of practitioners suddenly emerged from all over the world to share their experiences and debate ideas under this new DevOps banner. DevOps had become this lightning rod um, you know, for people who had something to say about how IT was or should be running. Presentations, meetups, sessions within other conferences, these all started happening um, all over the place. So, you know, and really this was a continuation of this online momentum that was built behind this avalanche of tweets and blog posts where people were, you know, sharing their uh, experiences and learning from others. And I think when people went as far as to start making their own song parodies and music videos, it became pretty clear to folks that DevOps was tapping into a raw nerve. You know, DevOps had become this full-fledged grassroots movement, something pretty rare in IT. Now, it was still being largely ignored by vendors, by analysts, by most traditional enterprise IT shops, but you know the movement was growing uh, by being fed from the passions of these these practitioners, I mean, these folks usually from you know web operations backgrounds, who were largely meeting and writing about these topics on their own free time. It was in these conversations that people really commiserated about the cultural and functional deficiencies in the legacy tools that they had been saddled with. In response, the DevOps community started to drive a whole new generation of tools that formalized the best practices that they wanted. You know, these tools had fun names like Puppet and Chef, Vagrant, Juju, Rundeck, Logstash, FPM. In fact, you can only guess what the F in FPM stands for. But these were serious tools. And in most cases, these tools were running circles around what the legacy tools could offer. Now, from, for the community, these were artifacts that represented a better way of working and a way to formalize their thinking about new ideas and new processes. Uh, to outsiders, these were shiny new toys that made you jealous if you didn't have them and drew you into the conversation. But all around, uh, you know, the enthusiasm for these tools was an early and energizing force. So pretty soon, um, some of the more plugged in analysts started to figure out, that, hey, there's something interesting brewing here, and maybe we should join the conversation. Uh, first in were folks like Michael Cote uh, from, at that point, from Red Monk, uh, Jay Lyman, who was with the 451 group. Um, and after that came folks like Cameron Haight of Gartner. Now, Cameron's influence is interesting. It's, it's subtle, but uh, potentially a, a pivotal point for DevOps relationship with the enterprise. Now, I can't definitively prove this assertion one way or the other, but the timing is definitely curious. Um, in March 2011, Cameron slips the slide into a presentation, and it definitely sent a strong signal to enterprise IT shops and the vendors who, who service them, something that was pretty much unheard of up to that point in the DevOps movement. So let's see what Cameron said. So he said, by 2015, DevOps will evolve from a niche strategy employed by large cloud providers into a mainstream strategy employed by 20% of global 2000 organizations. Now, I don't know if you speak analyst, but that roughly translates to DevOps is real, check it out. So, you know, now some folks might see this and get kind of hung up on the, uh, you know, the 20% uh, the prediction, whether it's too bullish or it's too conservative. Uh, but nonetheless, that's really not the, it's not the point. The point is there's a clear message here, which is DevOps is coming to the enterprise, go long on DevOps. Now, not long after that, I don't know whether this is by coincidence or not, but uh, we started to see almost all the large vendors pick up on the word DevOps and start to really fold it into their messaging. Um, you know, some have figured out how to use it quite nicely, while others, well, I guess you could say they missed the mark altogether. But nonetheless, you know, DevOps was appearing all over the place, and that's a good thing. Even at a DTO, we saw a significant spike in enterprise interest at around that same time. You know, suddenly large household names, far from what you would consider hip web companies, were interested in DevOps. You know, DevOps had really crossed the chasm and was well on its way into the mainstream at that point. So, you know, why is this history so important? Why do I care so much about the history of DevOps? Well, like the old saying goes, you know, I believe if you don't know where you're from, you really aren't going to know where you're going. You know, and this history reminds, reminds us of a few important things about DevOps. First, it reminds us that DevOps is really from practitioners by practitioners. It's not from a vendor, it's not from analysts. And we've already seen if you're a vendor, you're an analyst, and you try to hijack the message or push things or products or ideas on people who don't want them, the community will just find a way to route around you. You know, next, it also reminds us that, you know, DevOps, it's not a thing. It's not a product. It's not a spec. It's not a standard. It's not a job title. Other than the, this collective voice of the community, there really is no one true authority on what DevOps is or isn't. 
because really DevOps is an experience-based movement. It's about practitioners getting together, sharing what works, what doesn't works, and and uh, doesn't work, and you know collaborating on making themselves better and helping the companies that they work for. It also reminds us that. DevOps is decentralized and open to all. If you have an experience you want to share, or if you have questions from other, from other, or for other practitioners, you're always welcome. It's the way this movement started. It's the way it continues on today. So speaking of continuing on, what's been going on with DevOps days? Well, after those first few events, the uh, the whole series has really picked up steam and has been continuing uh, around the world ever since. So you know these are uh, community organized; they're free or close to free, and um, you know they've been going strong and really become the the core. These face to face meetings have become the core of the movement and sort of help you know energize and revitalize it each time one uh, happens. Um, if you really want to hang out with some of the best people on the planet um, in this space, definitely go to uh, to a DevOps days. In fact, there's another one coming up soon um, in Italy, and there's one after that in Australia, and it's going to kind of march on around the globe. So uh, definitely go to DevOps days. And if you see this guy, Patrick Dubois, whether it's at DevOps days or another DevOps related event, please give him a high five, buy him a beer, tell him thanks. But hey, you don't have to wait for a physical DevOps Days event. Uh, 24-7, 365 days of the year, the DevOps conversation carries on online. So jump on in, share what you have, learn from others. So there you have it. That's the history of DevOps as I saw it. Um, you know, there's all kinds of folks and different events that uh, were left off for the sake of time. Hopefully I, I didn't offend anybody. I was more trying to get the overall concept rather than all the exact uh all the exact contributions. Um, but if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Damon Edwards on Twitter or Damon at DTO Solutions.com. As always, thanks for watching.